Good morning, good morning. I am excited to be here today and to be able to have Kids Church with you again this week. So again, we can't go to the church to have church there, but we can have church right where we are. And so we're going to keep learning about the Israelites and what God has planned for them. Remember, they've been in captivity for a long time. We just learned about Daniel and his three friends and the trials they faced, but how brave they were and how they trusted God and how God saved them. Well, in our story today, we're going to learn about a girl in the Bible and how she was brave and faithful and trusted God and how God came through and saved her. But before we get started, we are going to begin just like we would if we were at church. And that would be with our mission jar. So I didn't have our mission jar last week, but I drove out to the church this week and grabbed a mission jar because I wanted to encourage you guys to continue to save your pennies and your coins and your dollars and any money you want to give to missions and put it in a special spot in a cup or a purse or a Ziploc bag, anywhere you want to save it. So when we get to come back and have church at our building, then you can bring your mission money and we will collect it all together in our mission jars and continue to save it for when we get to see Alan next and he'll use our money to spread the love of Jesus and to buy resources and things that he needs for his kids ministry in the UK. So great job, kids. Keep saving your money. And if anybody has some mission money already set aside, if they were already thinking about it, great job. Okay, does anybody have mission money that they want to set aside for the jar? Well, thank you for bringing money for our, my name is Daffodil. Oh, well, hello, Daffodil. Welcome. I'm glad you're here today. Well, um, I guess Daffodil is going to join us for our Bible story today. I'm excited that you came. We've got a lot of things to learn today. And um, like I was just telling the kids, the Israelites have been in captivity for a really long time, for 70 years they were in captivity. Can you believe it? That is a long time long time. Yes, it is a long time, but God is faithful. And God said that at the end of those seven years that they were in captivity, they were going to get to go back home. So they began to travel back home and they had a special job to do when they got home. Their job was to rebuild the temple. And the temple was the place where they would come together to worship God, to ask forgiveness of their sins and to spend time with God. Uh oh, well, what's the matter, Daffodil? Uh, I've got one major problem. What's your problem? Building a temple? That sounds like a lot of work. Oh, uh, well, yeah, it, it actually was a lot of work. They had to work on it for a really, really long time, but they stuck with it and they got their temple rebuilt. But our story today isn't really about the temple, um, although that was a huge accomplishment and they were all so excited to get to go home and not be in captivity anymore. Our story is about a special girl from the Bible. Ooh, a girl. Oh, I'm excited to learn about this girl. She sounds very interesting. Well, she was. She was very brave and she was very faithful and she trusted God and her name was Esther. Oh, wait a minute. I've heard this name before. I've heard the name Esther. Let's see. Uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, number. Oh, it just came to me. It's a book in the Bible. Oh, I'm so excited. Esther, 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 Esther. That's a book in the Bible. A book in the Bible. Hey, you're right, Daffodil. It is a book in the Bible. And we're going to be learning about Esther from the book of Esther today. Okay, we're going to begin learning about Esther today and how she was brave and faithful and trusted in God, even in a really hard time. So Esther, she was an orphan. That means she didn't have a mom or a dad that took care of her. She actually had a family member that helped take care of her. And his name was Mordecai. Can you guys say Mordecai? Can you say Mordecai? I can say Mordecai. Mordecai. Oh, very good, Daffodil. Daffodil could say it. It's kind of a long name, but that's Esther's cousin, and he helped take care of her. Now, Esther and Mordecai were both Jews, and they were living in Persia, and the king at the time, he was married to a woman named Vasti. Can you say Vasti? Can you? Vasti! 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 Yep, I can say it. 
say it. That was very good. So he was married to Vasti and one day he asked Vasti to do something for him and she said, nope. What? Yeah. She said, nope, I don't want to do that. And he said, well, then you can't be my queen anymore. And he kicked her right out. Can you believe that? It's crazy. But he did. And so now he needed a new wife and he saw Esther and thought, I would like her to be my wife. So the king made Esther his wife. Now Mordecai and Esther, neither one of them told the king that they were Jews. They kept that to themselves. So one day there's a man that lit, that works for the king and he was a really, really evil man. He wasn't nice at all. He was kind of mean too. Uh, uh oh, I don't like this. I feel a little scared. Was he super, super, super mean? Uh, well, he was super, super, super bad. He made some decisions that were not nice at all. Oh, no, I don't like that at all. I know. I, he He's kind of a tough character to deal with. Here's his story. He worked for the king and he had a really high up job. And so he told the king he wanted people to pray to him and worship him. And the king was like, okay, fine by me. Well, Mordecai was a Jew and it, who only worshiped the one true God. Uh-oh, I think I know where this is going. I remember the story of Daniel and how he refused to worship the false golden statue that was supposed to be a God. He said, but it's not the one true God. And so he wouldn't worship it. And Daniel got thrown into a lion's den. You're right. Daniel did get thrown into a lion's den and it was a pretty, pretty bad situation for him, but he trusted God and God saved Daniel. And I think you're going to like where this story is going too. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So Mordecai was a Jew and the new decree has gone out that they're supposed to worship Haman. So Mordecai, he loves God and God says to have no other gods before me. And so Mordecai does not worship Haman. Oh goodness. Haman gets pretty upset and goes to the king and he's not just mad at Mordecai. He now doesn't like any of the Jews at all. And he wants to kill all of the Jews. Ah, this is super bad news. Super, 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 super bad. It was bad. Why, do you, why are you thinking it's so bad? I mean, I know why it was bad. Because Esther is a Jew and she's the king's wife. Yes, Esther is the king's wife and she is a Jew. And the king does put out a decree to kill all the Jews because Haman wants them all killed. And so the king said, okay. And so things are getting ready to get really, really bad for Esther, for Mordecai, for all the Jews. And this is going to affect the king because his wife is a Jew. Now the decree went out and Esther didn't know what was going on. She just knew all of the Jews were crying and were upset and were so, so sad. So she sent out a messenger to her cousin Mordecai and she said, Mordecai, what is the matter? Why are all of the Jews so upset? And he sent back a message and said, Esther, you have to go to the king. You have to petition for us. You have to ask him not to kill us because he's put out a decree to kill all of the Jews. Oh no, this is getting really, really bad. Why? Why? I don't. I don't feel like that's that big of a deal for Mordecai to ask her to go talk to her husband. Well, it's it's not that simple. Why? Why isn't it that simple? Because things were different then. You couldn't just go talk to the king. You had to be asked to come see the king. If you went in to see the king when you weren't asked to come see the king, he could just have you killed right there on the spot. Oh no, I'm super upset. What's going to happen to Esther? Well, let me tell you. She wrote back to Mordecai and just told Mor Mordecai, I, I can't go talk to the king. No one can come talk to the king unless I'm asked to come talk to the king. So you're right. And Esther knew that part. So she wrote Mordecai back and told him, I can't just go in there. Mordecai called on Esther to help him. Yeah, she did. Mordecai did call on Esther to help him, but she knows the rules. So she told him the rules. <sighs> Mordecai wrote her back 
And he said, Esther, I believe you have been put in this exact spot at this exact time. You have been made queen so you could save the people. You have to go talk to the king. Oh no, she told him she couldn't and he's still telling her to go talk to the king. I know. So Esther has to make a decision. Is she going to put all of her faith and trust in men, in the laws they create, in the decrees they put out, or is she going to put her faith in God? Esther wrote back to Mordecai and said, don't eat or drink anything for three days. Tell all the Jews and just pray, pray, pray for God to help me in this situation. And so they did. So Esther, even though she knew her life could be at risk and that he could kill her if he wanted to because no one is allowed to come to the king unless they're asked to come to the king, she got the courage up to be able to go in there, to be able to speak for her people, to ask for them to be saved. So Esther goes into the king's room and asks to see him. And we are going to find out what did the king do next week. We're going to find out, did he reach his scepter out and tell her to come on in? Or was Esther killed because she went to speak to him without permission? So we are going to find out what happens next whenever we have kids church again. Okay. So I don't want you being too upset. I, I can give you a hint that she put her faith and trust in God. Although we're leaving the story off right there, I want you to know that Esther put her faith and trust in God and that God answers her prayers. But we're going to hear the rest of the story next time. But what I want you to think about is just how the Jewish people and Mordecai needed saved because they were Jews and Haman had the decree put out for all of them to be killed. They needed a savior and Esther is going to step in and do her best to try to be faithful and trust in God to help them. God sent us a savior. He sent Jesus Christ to save us from our sins so that whenever we believe in Jesus for eternal life, we are given the gift of eternal life. And so I love learning about Esther because she was faithful and brave, just like Jesus was faithful and brave and came to this earth to live and die and pay for our sins so that he could fulfill the promises that God had for us, which is the gift of eternal life when we put our faith in Jesus Christ. So I'm super excited to keep telling you and teaching you about Esther. Okay, kids, before we wrap up today, let's do some review questions from our lesson. Can anybody tell me what was the name of the queen before Esther? Do you remember? I remember. Well, what was it? Uh, you just want me to say it? Yeah, sure, you can say it. Vasti. Her name was Vasti. That's right. Her name was Vasti. Okay, does anybody remember why the king kicked her out? Why did the king say, you're not my wife anymore? Do you remember? I remember. Well, do you want to share? Yeah? Okay, I'll tell you. The king told her to do something, and she didn't want to do it, and so that was it. She was out. Oh, that's right. You're a really good listener. Okay, who replaced Vasti as the new queen? Oh, 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 I know this one. I know, I know, I know, I know. Okay. Do you guys know? Do you want to tell everyone? Esther! She trusted and loved God, and her name was Esther. Very good. Very good listening. Okay. Next question. Who wanted to kill all of the Jews, including Mordecai? and all of the other Jews. I know this one, and I don't like him very much at all. Oh, well, what was his name? Haman. His name was Haman. Very good job, Daffodil. It was Haman. Okay, next question. Why did Haman want to kill all of the Jews? I know this one too. Because Mordecai refused to worship him and would only worship the one true God, Haman wanted to kill Mordecai and all the Jews. You're right. Good job. Now, Queen Esther heard that the Jews were all really, really sad. Why were they sad? I know this one too. 
The Jews were sad because Haman made a decree for all the Jews to be killed and they were so scared and upset. Very good job. That's true. Let's see. Next question. Why was Esther afraid to talk to the king about Haman's plan? Oh, oh, I know this one. I already knew this one before you ever told us. And the answer is she was not allowed to talk to the king unless he asked her to come in. So she was super, 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 super nervous and scared to go in to talk to him because she could be killed. You are a great listener, Daffodil. Well, guys, that's what we've learned about Esther so far, is that she is the new queen. Her cousin Mordecai is living in town with a lot of other Jews. Uh, they worship the one true God. They're in quite a predicament because Haman, the evil man that works for the king, wants to kill all the Jews. Esther has been asked to go in and talk to the king about not killing the Jews, but it goes against the rules. So she's in quite a sticky situation. We are going to learn what happens next in the weeks to come. Guys, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. I love and miss you all. Can't wait to see you soon. Bye.